now enjoying a glorious sunset after we started off with an impressive sunrise a long time ago. Yep, that was the same day when we checked La Gravier early this morning. <laughs> Joe Chappelle, Pete Mel, and Martin Potter closing look how gorgeous out. Gorgeous you look, Joe. A massive. Oh. Hey, thanks, Pete. Yeah, look at that. L long day. <laughs> a lot of positivity coming through well, at the end. Comfortable? <laughs> no, it's been, it's been a long right. day. Makes me feel really comfortable <laughs> as we uh, continue on with the show, Pete. Okay. We had uh, some we interesting decisions uh, early in the morning. We obviously wanted yeah, to check out the beach break down the way. It wasn't quite what we were expecting. We had a 10 o'clock start first thing in the morning, and that first heat was a heavy one. Matt Wilkinson, world number three, under pressure to compete against the wild card, Juan Duru, and he was able to come up with a big result today, Pete. He did, and it was uh, high pressure, I think, all the way across the board, because he's been meeting up with these wild cards and having a lot of trouble. This time, he, it started out like, uh-oh, made a mistake early in the heat, gave Juan Duru a really solid size set wave. Juan surfed amazing. But then Wilco got this wave here, and I was like, oh, okay, it's a heat. Yeah, you know, I, I kind of knew that, um, you know, Matty Wilco was going to have a little bit too much firepower for John Daru. Daru's going to be on tour next year, though. That's going to be, a, a, you know, a dangerous thought because he's, uh, he's in that same sort of mold as the Leonardo Ferravanti, the Kanoya Garashi. Big, strong kid, doesn't fall off that much, doesn't get rattled by the big names. He came out and made uh, Matty Wilco earn this win. Really impressive to see Juan Duro through the QS, but also being so comfortable in front of the hometown crowd, applying pressure early to Wilco, and could have created a major upset. He hung out, watched every heat after this. His longtime girlfriend, Maud Lacar, was in his corner, and we'll see some brilliance out of him. The big thing for Wilco, though, he was the guy that was spoke about maybe showing the most pressure. He lost the jersey, fell two spots, and he had a quick answer to show that he is still determined to be in the hunt for the world title. Pete. That's what makes this so fun to watch. I mean, you got a guy like this who's going to be making the tour, give him a shot in the big leagues here at a big event. He's going to be the wild card. So he's going to go up against those top seeds. It's just the storybook. It's so nice to see because of what it does to, to a guy like this, he makes it earn it. You know, and he wants to earn it. He doesn't want to have gifts. He doesn't want anything. And he did these types of, well. this type of surfing when he needed to do it. And he pulled it off, and so that's going to give him confidence for the rest of this event. It was amazing to see him take two wins to start off the season, surprising himself with results. As soon as people started talking about pressure, he proved himself at cloud break to make a final runner-up to Gabriel Medina. Now more questions to Wilco. Will he continue his reign in France, where he hasn't made a quarterfinal in the past? Seems like the events where he hasn't had a result previous he turns in, wins, or makes the final pots. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, l last year, completely different this year. Every event that he's done well in last year, he's, he's done uh, not that well in this year. So if you flip everything around, he's, he's, got, he's due for a good result here in France. You know, all the pressure, not all the pressure, but all the focus is on um, John John and, and Medina, you know, because basically everyone's yeah. saying those two guys are going to fight it out. Watch out for Wilco. We saw a little bit of the old Wilco, the beginning of the year Wilco, that big layback snap. I mean, kid's got game, you know, he's just got to have fun, enjoy wonder, it, and uh, go for it. You wonder if Micro is starting to shift his what, what he's doing with him a little bit. You know, you kind of think that it, what was uh, being said before, even though it was probably right, at some point you kind of start to shift those words, change those words a little bit, give them a little bit of a different feel. Yep. Um, you know, because things change, and, and ultimately I think that, like again, you know, Wilco knows what he needs to do, cut loose, pull it off, and then all of a sudden we get to talk good about him. It's been a fun world title showdown. As we know, Wilco dominating the start. We had the whole picture of John Florence, Medina in that top three picture. Things got real exciting because then we had Kelly get his 55th win. We had Jordy Smith win at Lowers. The last two champs of the previous event already knocked out of the contest as we start with Jordy Smith, this is the South African, trying to put himself in a fighting shop for a world title. Had a rematch with rookie Ryan Callanan, and Callanan hasn't had the best rookie season, but he seems to have found something when he takes on Jordy Smith, taking him out for the second time this year, Potts. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, you, some guys have just got your number, you know, and I think Callanan uh, feels comfortable surfing against Jordy, obviously. Um, you know, this little left reform really came into play for him. You know, we saw glimpses of Ryan Callanan's brilliance throughout this year. Um, you know, but showing obviously that, you know, some pizzazz both on the backhand and front side. Hey, Jordy surfed good. I mean, you know, you look at the ways that he's catching. He's, he's not holding back. He's, there's a sense of urgency there, but Callanan just a, a little bit too strong. And I think there was no pressure uh, for, for Ryan Callanan in this heat. You know, it was, uh, no one was expecting him to win. He's, he's had a very sort of lackluster year. So he just let it all hang out. And I think uh, he's, he's kind of found something. 
I think he's realized that, you know, this is how I've got to compete from now on in. Really impressive to see that radical backside yeah. blast. This is almost like a signature move for Arkal. No one really does it like he does, and he's able to show that new school act from a rookie, and that meant a lot to him. You can see this claim coming out of that turn. He knew Jordy Smith was a giant matchup. Yep. As Smith is uh, dealing with the 25th, Pete, going from number one in a contest, next event, you're talking about a world title race, and then you're out in the second round. Yeah, it's the highs and lows, right? I mean, I think he even mentions it in his, in his post-heat interview. It's, it's part of this, this sport. You're dealing with the ocean. I mean, now, to me, when I was watching that heat, that feel, felt like um, one of the most funky heats because it felt like a lot of water was kind of sh shifting around. Didn't know what it wanted to do. And it, it you know, go left, go right. It just didn't have a, a rhyme or reason to it. And, you know, he couldn't make those adjustments. Arkel did. We yep. talked to Jordy Smith uh, reacting to a tough loss this morning. She's the ups and downs. I think that's what creates a, a pretty picture at the end though, you know, having those extremely highs and then really low lows. Um, yeah, you know, for me, I don't know, if, uh, the first heat and second heat, I didn't really get the chance to kind of open up and surf the way I wanted. Um, in Ryan's case, you know, I don't think he's had too many big results this year, so he's really just at this point trying to um, uh, do, do his best surfing and, and get a result where, where he can, but uh, I, don't, I don't feel like there's too much pressure on those guys as opposed to the guys that are in the top five trying to hunt down a, you know, a, a event wins. Tough one for Jordy Smith as we check out the numbers. Ryan Callanan, 6.93 as his high. Jordy Smith, 6.5. Both have the same low score. That's how close that matchup was on paper. Big momentum boost for the rookie who's just trying to show himself in the last couple of stops of the season. For Jordy Smith now, you see him backed into a corner. We go back in Portugal history, we've seen Smith final there at Super Tubos a couple times. We've seen him recently against Mick Fanning, where he hasn't had the best results at the Pipe Masters. Is all this focus going to be on this next contest at Super Tubos, Pots? Yeah, you know, I think, uh, you know, these next two events are going to be super important. I mean, uh, you know, Jordy's... Uh, obviously fighting to get himself in that world title uh, p position but um, you know obviously you look at waves like Chopu, Cloudbreak and Pipeline being Geordie's weakness but you know he's getting better at those you know he's working towards uh, becoming more of a complete surfer and I think it's just a matter of time before it all clicks for him. Unbelievable round two action when we saw top seeds falling from Geordie Smith the next big name was the biggest name of the sport Kelly Slater 11 time world champ going down to Leo Fioravante for the second time this season the Italian wild card calling France his home since he's about 12 years of age has found the secret to beat the greatest of all time, Pete. Well, it's a complete contrast to what we see with someone else who surfs in this event and surfed in it for many years, Jeremy Flores, which is also a good friend of, of Leo Fioravanti's. Uh, Leo seems to kind of relish in this type of an atmosphere, you know, and I think that, you know, we saw it at Margaret River where he's all of a sudden feeling like he's part of this championship tour. Um, you know, it's such an early part of his career, you know, sitting at the top of the rankings. It's just, a, it's pretty cool to see how much of a veteran feel this young kid has. I mean, he, he, this was a weird heat, right? Again, another one of those weird heats where, you know, Kelly was just a little bit stumbling and just looked out of sorts. And then uh, even even Leo didn't look great until he started connecting with these laps. No, well, it's a, it's a tricky lineup, wasn't it? I mean, as you said before, there's a lot of water moving around. That tide was rushing out, you know, uh, and the, the, the left was going sort of against the rip. So really hard to really connect with the, the maneuvers. You know, Kelly made a lot of mistakes. And even in the post heat interview, he kind of touched on the fact that he, he had a lot of stuff going through his mind. He wasn't really focused enough, you know, on that heat. And up against someone like Leo Ferravanti, I mean, that kid's going to go out there. He's not going to make any mistakes. Big names don't, don't rattle him anymore, and uh, you know he's going to be a tough one to watch when he makes the World Tour, that's well, for sure. You know his home state's getting you know, just yep. bombarded by a huge storm, Matthew, so you, that's a lot to think about overnight. Yep. Really impressive showcase of talent from Leo Ferravante. Again, number one on the qualifying series, so we're anticipating his full-time debut next season as he's taking Kelly out for the second time this year. We caught up with Kelly Slater after that tough loss today. I just woke up this morning just not feeling on at all and I was struggling to try to find myself, find a pace out there and that's why I started to kind of work those inside lefts. I just wanted to get moving and get my mind off of things and, and try to start just feeling my surfing but um, you know the first few waves I got, the, the, almost the more waves I got the, the worse I felt for a minute. I just was struggling, struggling and then I, I kind of started to find some open face and I thought okay I'm going to get myself in this thing and you know he didn't have a very good start either. And then he just, we both were kind of building, he was just building faster and, and uh, you know, I never, I never sort of found it. I'm not sure, I might, I'm, I'm going to 
uh, figure out whether I'm going to go to Portugal. I, I actually said before here, if I didn't gain ground or at least keep ground with the guys ahead of me, I probably would skip Portugal and work on getting my body back together and getting getting some things worked out in my life. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to really think about that. Always great hearing from Kelly Slater, 11-time world champ, suffering that loss to Leo Ferravante early this morning and now starting to reroute what he might possibly do later on this season. Obviously, he's attracted to an amazing forecast. He talked about already looks like it might be really big for Super Tubos, which is the next stop. Kelly's here to win a world title, so if that's not going to happen, we might see him kind of reroute the next part of the next couple of months. Pipe, still one of his favorite venues in the whole world. He's still motivated to win Pipe Master titles, and maybe a break could get him healed up so he could close out the season in a positive he's way. Motivated to surf Pipeline with nobody out. I mean, that, <laughs> that's what it comes <laughs> down to. Um, yeah, and forecasts. I think he's uh, obviously he wants good waves, and uh, if there's not going to be good waves, it's it's tough. I mean, I think that's part of the reason why today he had kind of a rough go. Yep. It wasn't this you know big barrels out there, and yep. it, it's tough to get fired up at, at 44 when the waves aren't perfect. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, he follows the he follows the swell, doesn't he? He loves those uh, those challenges, and you know, you just look at his performance uh, over there at uh, Chopu. I mean, he, he's actually getting better in waves like that, yeah. if that's possible. Yeah. So, you know, if we can find a year where the waves are pumping at each event, I think Kelly Slade is a shoe in for a world champion. Impressive, Kelly trying to ride the same board as he won to victory on in Tahiti, and also not getting the best scores on it today in competition here in lackluster conditions against Leo Firavante. Now situations changing in the world title showdown. Remember Jordy Smith, Kelly Slater got into the mix with those wins in the last two stops of the year. They're knocked out so you can see their point totals already dialed heading into Portugal. Now it's all up to Florence to maybe try to keep the yellow jersey. He can do it on his own if he makes the semi-finals here in France. He's guaranteed to wear yellow heading into Portugal. You can see if he loses early with a 13th, Medina with a shot to take the yellow jersey if he went on to win this event. Matt Wilkinson still with that outside shot to regain the yellow if John though loses early. So it's up to watch in Florence first. If he gets knocked out in round three or an equal ninth, that could open the door for that yellow jersey to be traded off once again, Pete. It just comes down to it being really close, you know, and I think that now we're starting to see, you know, with Kelly dropping out, Probably Jordy dropping off the list. You got this this three horse race that we can really start focusing on, and all because you know the cameras are going to be on them going into these next few heats, yep. and uh, you know that <laughs> we'll build the pressure as yep. we like to do. It's yep. just what part's our job, right? It's all part of it. As you look at Medina, Florence, favored as previous champions here at France, where Wilco's trying to provide us a breakthrough quarterfinal result at least, which would be his personal best. What a turnaround season for Matt Wilkinson this year, still in the hunt for the world title race. Well, we got excited today when our commissioner, Jesse Miley Dyer, decided to call on the Roxy Pro round two. We knew we had one super heat to look forward to. Courtney Conlog in a must-win situation to keep her title hopes alive, had rookie Chelsea two off. The conditions looked a little bit ch challenging, things were changing a little bit, and Chelsea Tuak opened up this heat very quickly to start off, Fox. Yeah, she did everything right, Joe, you know, applied the pressure straight away. Um, you know, just she needed the scores a little bit higher though, I think, you know, in the four to three to four point range. Um, you know, Courtney, a couple of quick mistakes at the beginning of the heat, but then once she found her feet, once she got that one good wave under her belt, um, you know, it was almost like she just clicked into gear and, uh, and sort of steamrolled over um, Chelsea. So, you know, she's back on track. Uh, she finds herself in round number three. It's going to be an, an unbelievable uh, event, but it's uh, basically Tyler Wright in the box seat. Um, Courtney Conlog, in my eyes, really has to win this event. How sketchy was this for a few minutes, though? When you were oh, yeah. watching, it was like you watched her fall twice, <laughs> and you're like, no, is this really going to unfold <laughs> like this? But then, of course, right, she gets that one wave, or she carried a lot of speed. Yep. A very good score for what that wave was at that time. Um, she ended up winning the heat hands down, oh, yeah. um, but I mean that was that kind of icebreaker all of a sudden Okay, she pulls this floater off. She doesn't eat, you know, doesn't stuff the nose. Yeah clicks in gets two more You know eight. I think she got an 801 and then another seven uh, And it was lights out for yeah. Chelsea yeah. really impressive turnaround for Courtney Conlog really started her campaign at the 20-minute mark to come back and ended up comboing the rookie from Barbados who's still searching for her first win as she'll go into her final stop at Honolulu Bay to try to get through some heats but she had a lot of intent to try to change that world title showdown. Courtney keeping her title hopes alive as we update you with the scenarios. Conlog now has to make the semifinals at least to send this to the final in Maui. 
Obviously, Tyler, if she goes to the quarters, <laughs> Conlog then has to make the final. Right now, though, we're seeing Tyler equal ninth at this stage as we follow suit with the World Title Showdown. And Conlog looks determined to send it down to Honolulu Bay. Focus has to be on winning events, and I think that Courtney knows yep. that. And if she can just figure out how to win each and every heat, not to get ahead of herself, I think this is going to be a great showdown. Courtney's got to focus on herself, you know, and just do exactly what she did at, at Cash Guys. Just go out there, uh, destroy waves, and win heats. And if she does that, she'll find herself in the final, uh, and then we'll uh, we'll find uh, ourselves in Maui. Looking forward to an incredible battle, and hopefully we get some pump in waves. So. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Really impressive battle during that matchup in round two. We were trying to find Tyler Wright. Where are we going to have a world title celebration? <laughs> chilling on the couch, man. Tyler, exactly. Tyler <laughs> realizing it, it wasn't going to be happening today. So it, very interesting to see that go down. Obviously, we have some great heats to look forward to in round three action now. Focusing on the guys in the top two picture. Ryan Callanan took out Jordy. Leo Firavante took out Kelly. Now, more action from these names. Callanan Woo. will now take on John John Florence. Not an easy draw, man. We've watched Callanan the entire year, just waiting for him to bust out. And maybe this is the event, you know, that she's got John John. Again, I love this. Two young guys. And then you've got this heat here, Pots. Gavin well, Medina, this, Leo yeah, Firavante. This is going to be a great heat. Um, and again, Leo is not going to, uh, he's not going to be nervous. He's going to go out there. He's, he's enjoying the moment. There's no pressure on him to qualify to, to you know, or anything like that. So he's already uh, finds himself on the tour next year. This is going to be an incredible, uh, incredible battle there. But uh, I think Medina's going to be a little bit too strong. Let's just hope some waves come. Yeah. Like, let's just, like, I um, mean, you look at the forecast, there's opportunity for offshores in the morning. You know what, though? You look over our shoulder. We've been dawn to dusk, but we wait to get here at dawn. And, and just hope that the banks are there and we're going to get some swell. I mean, there is enough swell to hold through the weekend. They're going to have some offshore breeze in the mornings. Get those guys out there and, and even give the women some chance in, that, in those better conditions, too, for the next three or four days. Looking yeah. forward to the weekend. Also, Matt Wilkinson will take on Kai Otten, an all Australian goofy foot battle in round three is the world title oh, showdown. That's not an easy draw. That's either. a tough hit as well. Really fun heats to look forward to. Enjoy WorldSurfLeague.com, and we'll see you bright and early for Dawn Patrol. We'll see you then.